Snow Tracks is sponsored by Ski Do Snowmobiles, Yamaha revs your heart, MBRP Performance Exhaust built for the victory lap, and by iPone Lubricants, exclusively distributed by Parts Canada. The Indy name is legendary. Doesn't matter what brand you own or are loyal to, if Indy doesn't carry some level of respect in your mind, you have no sense of snowmobile history. When the name was retired in the mid-2000s, there were many who felt a real sense of loss, as strange as it may sound. That's how iconic the name is. When it was reintroduced in 2013, it was met with much anticipation and expectation. However, it didn't take long for Polaris to begin spreading the name around their lineup until once again, Indy stood for true trail performance snowmobiles. For 2022, Polaris has no less than 24 Indy models to choose from. Units that range from youth and low cost high value to the ultimate in high performance with no compromise. This season, Polaris is heavily pushing their slogan, there's an Indy for everyone. With so many models to choose from, it seems like an entirely plausible claim, but I'm not good at blindly accepting what others tell me. I need to find out for myself. So let's take the next few minutes and find out if there really is an Indy for everyone. Now, starting at the bottom of the lineup, in terms of price and performance, you get the Evo, focused on small stature riders, and the full-size 550s that include 1-Up, 2-Up, and 2-Up Adventure models. These sleds are all based on the ProRide platform and, as the name suggests, are all powered by the 550 fan engine. While they may not seem exciting at first, they represent excellent value and are perfect for the person who wants to get into the sport but wants to do it on a budget. The next models in the lineup are the SPs. They're still axis based, but instead of the 550, they now feature the 600 clean fire engine, which is a significant step up. Yet they still remain very reasonably priced and affordable. Now from this point onward, all sleds are based on the Matrix platform and are available with only 650 and 850 engine options. The first group of Matrix based Indies is the Adventure and XC models. And I'm grouping them together because they are essentially the same mechanically. So what kind of rider is best suited to an Indy XC? Well, you're getting the latest chassis technology, the newest and most powerful engine options, and excellent Fox QS3 adjustable shocks. You also get aggressive track options with up to 1.5 inch lugs. The Adventure models are mechanically identical to the XC137. The only difference is a set of handguards, a tunnel bag, and a beefier front bumper. When you choose the XC, you're not giving up anything in terms of performance, handling, or ergonomics to the higher end models. The NDXC is perfect for the rider who wants the industry's best handling and ergonomics, fantastic ride quality, and class leading power, yet prefers the simplicity of the standard gauge and QS3 shocks. Now, in my opinion, the XC is the perfect sled for the majority of today's trail riders. In fact, Mark even says that the XC suits his riding style to a T. So if that's true, why does Polaris offer the XCR and VR1 trim levels? What kind of rider could they possibly be intended for and why have both? They seem so similar. Both of these sleds fall under Polaris's special Starfire heading. This means that they are exclusively available during snow check and represent the absolute pinnacle of performance and technology. If you're the kind of person who rides hard and fast, wants the absolute best technology and suspension components and isn't afraid of a higher price tag, but isn't interested in launching off snowbanks or pounding whooped out ditches at warp speed, the VR1 is definitely the sled you want. Its Walker Evans Velocity WER shocks are valved in a more comfortable range for long days in the saddle, and its lower riser is definitely more comfortable for sit-down style riding. It's kind of like the Cadillac CTS-V of snowmobiles, all the comfort and technology and style with performance to match. The VR1 suits my riding style perfectly and is my go-to Polaris model. Now with that said, 
If you're among the most aggressive riders who push hard in the corners, stand up and throttle through the bumps, and don't shy away for an opportunity to get the skis and track off the ground, there's no better option than an XCR. Now you might be asking yourself, why? What makes an XCR better suited to a rider like you? The XCR is, for all intents and purposes, Polaris's cross-country race sled, but available to trail riders. It comes standard with a race-level radial disc brake, solid jack shaft, tunnel and slide rail stiffeners, a taller bar riser with race bend handlebar, and a tether. But more importantly, it comes with Walker Evans' top-of-the-line 2-inch velocity high-low shocks that are both high and low speed compression and rebound adjustable. Now, it doesn't come standard with the 7S display, but this is absolutely an option you should choose when you order it. It even features 128 and 136 inch track lengths with a 2.52 pitch and four wheel rear axle, just like the racer. The truth is very few people are capable of using an XCR to its full potential. But for those who are, the XCR has everything you need to launch every approach and pound every whoop all day long. It's still a matrix though. So industry leading handling and ergonomics are just part of the package. When we go out for a ride, AJ always poaches the XCR. So the question that was posed at the very beginning is whether or not Polaris' claim that there's an indie for everyone is accurate. After looking at the whole lineup and figuring out what type of rider each indie model is best suited for, I think it's pretty clear that yes, there really is an indie for every type of trail rider. Whether you're just getting into the sport or don't need big horsepower, want more performance without the huge price tag, want the absolute best ergonomics, handling and power, but like to keep things simple, want the best of the best with zero compromise, or think you ride like Levi LaValle, I think there really is an indie model to suit you perfectly. Snow Tracks is sponsored by Hercules Tire. Ride in our strength. For model year 22, Yamaha is bringing an important piece of technology to the sport for the second time. What am I talking about here? Electronic power steering. According to Yamaha, their extensive consumer research indicates a significant number of Apex and Vector owners won't let go of their EPS-equipped rides until there's an EPS option on a new Yamaha. Knowing EPS is a premium feature, Yamaha has chosen, at least in this first year of EPS availability, to make EPS standard on select Sidewinder Turbo models only. This week's test ride will feature the Sidewinder LTX GT EPS, Yamaha's answer to BMW's 7 Series Autobahn Cruiser. When the topic is Yamaha, the handle GT means Big Mile Groom Trail Sport Cruiser. The new LTX GT with electronic power steering embodies this description to a T. Yamaha has inserted their full-on 998cc turbocharged and intercooled triple-cylinder Genesis power plant under the LTX GT's hood. Make no mistake about it, this is no downgraded turbo. It's the same explosively fast, relentlessly torquey power plant used in the iconic SRX Sidewinder. At this juncture, you may be asking yourself, why would a sport touring pilot need a 180 horsepower engine to rack up big miles on groomed trails. The LTX GT EPS uses Yamaha's 137 inch sliding front arm coupled rear skid to deliver a cushy ride in big bumps or trail chatter. The appearance of a full on set of Fox QS3 dampers ensures both a smooth ride and the ability to adjust damping in response to the trail conditions you're facing. Up front, Yamaha has chosen to incorporate dual-rate IFS springs working in concert with a pair of QS3s. This comfort package, combined with a 137-inch ice ripper for positive bite and extra stability on icy trails, comes pretty close to cruising perfection. Maybe you're wondering if the more mainstream, mellow paint and graphics might undermine your masculinity. Honestly, you'll be just fine. Roll the push button activated starter over and listen to what is now known as the sport's most formidable, if not somewhat intimidating growl emanating from the most powerful engine in the biz. Squeeze the loud handle and the LTX responds with a shockingly civil engagement and smooth drive away response. Don't worry, things get serious very quickly as you increase throttle input. There is a moment when the turbo delivers boost in earnest and you feel like you're being shot out of a cannon as you're violently pried rearward against your will. 
Quite frankly, my power crazed friends, this snowmobile lays down filet mignon sized thrust, which ultimately will make you a more respectful person. From this point on in the Sidewinder experience, power becomes a non-issue. There is simply more than you'll ever need, but precisely the amount you want. Let's call it unlimited. All of this incivility would be largely unmarketable if not for Yamaha's attention to important details like a comfortable and warm windshield, a sumptuous saddle, generous rear storage, and a goggle bag along with hookups for an electric face shield and a GPS. The kind of stuff big mileage touring aficionados demand. And here is where the LTX delivers what Yamaha files have been crowing for. Smooth, effortless, speed proportional electronic power steering. Clearly, keeping this potent and powerful sled pointed in the right direction could be a formidable task, considering the speeds this sled can sustain mile after touring mile. The all-new three-pound lighter proportional EPS system produces control and handling sensations, which bring a strong measure of civility to the touring persona of the LTX GT. At lower speeds, assist is noticeably strong, more noticeable than on any previous Yamaha EPS models. As speed increases, the level of assist decreases, producing a more predictable on-center feel that builds rider confidence at bigger digits. Sawing the bars all day while bending a snowmobile as powerful as the LTX GT through the twisties might become a strenuous regimen without EPS. If we were asked what snowmobile in Yamaha's lineup would make the best use of EPS, we would indubitably proclaim this sled, the LTX GT. This customer will immediately appreciate Yamaha's new EPS system and will quantify the extra expense of EPS as not just worth it, but tangible value. Come to think of it, Yamaha has been delivering a ton of value with all of the Sidewinder models. This new LTX GT with EPS provides practical and useful value for riders who live to go the distance. Trail Tech is sponsored by Princess Auto. Make it work. Here at Snow Tracks, we put on miles. Miles on our trucks, miles on our sleds, and miles on the trailers that we tow our sleds in behind our trucks. Whether it's a cross-country trip or just a quick drive to the local dealership for a new drive belt, winter tires are not something that we cheap out on. Sure, you can run all season tires throughout the winter, but when it comes to ultimate confidence, when the snow gets deep and the driving gets bad, we opt for a quality winter tire package to keep our truck, trailer, and sleds the safest that they can be out on the road. But most importantly is the crew that we travel with and the safety of each person inside the cab of our truck. And as for that, well, I can't put a price on it. And for this season, we've opted to outfit our truck with a brand new set of Hercules Avalanche TT premium studdable winter tires. And when it comes to studying, that's gonna be dependent on the area that you live. Unfortunately for us, we're not allowed to, but should you be in your region, these Avalanche TT tires are fully studdable for the ultimate winter traction. And while studying is the highest level of security in the winter, the difference between an all season and a true dedicated winter tire is absolutely incredible. Now it's not just the tread or the tread compound or the density or durometer of the rubber used in a winter tire that makes it so impressive. It's all of these things wrapped up in one that makes a winter tire perform the way it does. From the thin gauge, full depth siping on the tread blocks to create more areas of bite or the sawtooth features on the Hercules snow grabber grooves that hold snow to allow for a snow on snow grip, these tires perform. Now I can tell you all about the different technical specs of Hercules winter tires, but for me where the rubber really hits the road, literally, is the three key areas, acceleration, stopping, and cornering. When towing a fully loaded trailer and a truck full of riders in all of our gear, it's important that I have the best traction possible, especially when I'm driving way up north, where if we're being honest, sometimes the roads are less frequently maintained. Feeling confident that even on a steep grade, I'll be able to take off from a stoplight or not go into a slide when I'm making a slow speed corner on icy conditions after a stop sign keeps me feeling confident and my drive less stressful. Likewise, when I'm coming to a stop on the road or even having to make an abrupt stop for a whiteout, distracted driver, or even an accident ahead, knowing that my tires are going to grip even in the harshest conditions is definitely top on my list. Now, the third area I find the Avalanche TT to be able to aid my winter driving is in cornering. I don't know about you, but I've been headed down the road many times in the past with a trailer in tow, going around a corner when I start to feel everything slightly let go. 
The very thin, full-depth siping on the Avalanche TT tires allows the tread to have so much more edge to bite even ice with, and I find in situations as I described, the Avalanche to really provide a level of confidence an all-season tire just never can reach. With the amount of miles we put on in the winter, we run a lot of highways and many times have to press on to get the job done, even when the roads become icy or snow covered. When I have to make a cornering move around a slowed snowplow or a vehicle pulled onto the shoulder, the grip these tires provide gives me the confidence to press on and make it to my destination. Now, along with the winter tire setup on our truck, one of the things that I haven't talked to you about is the tires that we run on our trailers. They're not winter specific tires, but they are a huge upgrade over the ones that probably came factory on your trailer. The Power ST2 tire from Hercules is a trailer specific radial ply tire specifically designed to reduce rolling resistance, increase wear life and maximize durability. The tread compound is specifically designed to improve wet handling and braking situations. And this I notice especially in the winter. The trailer stays in line with the truck, even in slushy and wet situations and tracks as it should. Now I would be amiss if I didn't mention the stock tires that come on most trailers. Unfortunately, the less known brands you'll see on almost every trailer produced have a reputation for failing at just about any time, most times the wrong time. So now we switch out all of our trailer tires, even our spares for the quality and minimum 36 month protection plan offered on all Hercules trailer tires. With the products that I've mentioned from Hercules installed on our trucks and trailers, I know that we're ready for anything that winter has to throw at us, because as they say, the show must go on. Snow Tracks has been sponsored by Polaris, Think Outside, Yamaha, Revs Your Heart, The Regions of Quebec by the Sea, Discover Our Ride Ideas, FXR Racing, Maximum Versatility for All Conditions, and by Arctic Cat Snowmobiles. There's no denying that Skidoo has been first to market with some pretty impressive pieces of technology and that it's been going on for decades. Looking back even 20 years ago, they brought us things like RER Reverse, adjustable air suspension, and rider forward ergonomics. Some of these things literally revolutionized the industry and sent their competition into a tailspin. Some of them were simply innovative technology we've never seen before that made the riding experience better. Still others were focused on safety and security beyond a level the industry had ever seen, like DESS. Before DESS, every snowmobile simply had a key. In some cases, a manufacturer might have only had four or five keys in their entire lineup. This meant that if a thief could buy all these keys, they could simply start up your sled and drive away. DESS changed that. Not only was it digitally encoded, but it did away with the key altogether, utilizing the tether instead. Essentially, if you didn't have the correctly encoded tether, the sled wouldn't run, period. After using DESS for decades, I can honestly say I feel much safer walking away from my sled or leaving it in the trailer overnight. Snowmobiling is supposed to be fun and enjoyable. Removing any potential to worry makes the overall experience better. Of course, if we jump farther forward in time, we come to one of the most innovative pieces of technology the industry has ever seen, something most people had never even considered. Shot Electric Start is the next evolution in electric starting and was initially targeted only at mountain riders who shut off and restart their engine dozens of times every day. It was quickly realized that even off-trail crossover riders could benefit from it, so it was added to the backcountry lineup as well. The idea behind Shot was simple. If there was a way to save all the energy a rider uses pull starting their sled dozens of times a day, he or she could ride harder, longer. But it only made sense if there were no compromises, most importantly when it comes to weight. Now I get to ride in the mountains a few times every year, so I am by no means acclimated to higher altitudes. In fact, riding aggressively in the mountains absolutely kicks my butt. But when I'm on a shot equipped skidoo, I have noticeably more energy throughout the day. Energy I would have used up pulse starting that sled over and over. Now, of course, we can't talk about Skidoo's technological contributions to the snowmobile industry without mentioning the very first factory produced two stroke turbo. This wasn't big news, it was huge news. The way the 850 turbo engine package was designed to automatically adjust the wastegate as altitude changed was ingenious to say the least. But the 850 turbo isn't just technology for the sake of bragging rights, it offers real world benefits to high altitude riders. The turbo maintains sea level horsepower all the way to 8,000 feet. Even at 10,000 feet, an 850 turbo equipped Summit is making considerably more horsepower than a non-turbo. 
For people like me who rely heavily on track speed versus expert technique to keep moving in deep snow, this extra horsepower is a godsend. But when you look at what it's allowed pro-level riders to do, things they've never been able to do before, it becomes abundantly clear this is going to change mountain and off-trail riding forever. The most recent piece of technology Skidoo has developed and brought to market before anyone else is one that's targeted at riders exactly like me. SmartShock's auto-adjusting suspension is something consumers have been asking for ever since similar technology appeared in the side-by-side -side industry years ago. I spent considerable time in side-by-sides with this type of technology, and there's no question in my mind it offers tangible benefits that not only make riding more fun, but safer as well. I've always believed that truly good technology should feel almost invisible on a snowmobile, and this perfectly describes smart shocks. With typical snowmobile suspension, I find myself constantly thinking about shock setup. How can I make it ride better? As conditions change, what changes do I need to make to maintain the best ride quality? Now I can forget about all of that. I simply select which suspension mode I need to be in depending on what type of riding I'm doing and let the system take care of the rest. Of course, there are additional benefits to smart shocks as well. In my opinion, the most important one for both novice and experienced riders alike is that smart shocks helps keep the chassis flat in the corners. If you're a beginner, this adds an extra layer of confidence and control you can't get anywhere else. If you're a more experienced rider, you can push the sled harder in the corners knowing that it will stay flat with both skis on the ground. It's so effective that I noticed it right away and was immediately able to adjust how I ride to take full advantage of it. Whether you're riding easy or super hard, Smart Shocks is technology that's making your riding experience better in a tangible way. Clearly, Skidoo is not afraid to not just innovate, but push the boundaries of technology in the snowmobile industry. When I look back at where we've come from and then ponder where we might be going, it's hard to imagine what Skidoo might come up with next.